As I underscore the enormous potential of BRI and acknowledge that the cooperation between Africa and China under the FOCAC framework is doing the best it can and actually yielding results, it is critical to also appreciate that Belt and Road Initiative's full promise has been severely undermined by major threats, key among them being severe global pandemics, shocks and wars, and an unjust international financial system, and climate change, which have subjected our economies to considerable stress and caused many developing economies, especially the least developed countries, majority of which are in Africa, to struggle under massive debt. In turn, this undesirable state of affairs has had the negative effect of making African countries unable to fully tap into the vast array of opportunities presented by the Belt and Road Initiative. It is for this reason that in keeping with the best spirit of South-South solidarity, I respectfully call on each one of you, Your Excellencies, to lend your full support to China and Africa to work closely together on the following four critical areas. First, to urgently collaborate in championing a fair international financial system that enables Africa and other countries in the global south to benefit from available resources and opportunities. China, as a friend of Africa, should rally the rest of their shareholders to double their contributions to the multilateral development facilities like IDA 21, <coughs> Africa Development uh, Bank's replenishment program, as well as IMF's special drawing rights, to enable more African countries access concessional funding to support economies that are heavily affected. We received the news this morning of President Xi's statement on their contribution in this respect with a lot of gratitude. The second critical area requiring China's close collaboration is to work with Africa on debt treatment generally, and in particular, reprofiling of debt to incorporate a longer grace period and longer tenure for both existing and future financial facilities to provide fiscal space for uptake of urgent development financing in social, in matters infrastructure, and other sectors critical for stabilizing Africa's economies. Closely related to this is the urgent need for collaboration in reforming the international credit rating and debt sustainability systems. In this connection, I am happy to share with you that with the support of Africa Development Bank and other African multilateral banks, we shall be holding the first African meeting in Congo Brazzaville next month to establish parameters for the proper evaluation of African assets and gross domestic product and new modalities for determining Africa's debt sustainability using Africa's real wealth. 